Hi, my name is Richard Lehart and uh, I have a new book, The Synthesizer, that I want to um, show you about. I've started a page here on my site uh, to document my use of the instrument, uh, my journey with this instrument. And um, what I want to do in this little video here is uh, kind of explain to you the whole system briefly and uh, the performance system that I've uh, designed to go along with it, the quadraphonic performance system that I hope to be using in performances around uh, in the coming year or so. So uh, let's take a look here. Uh, first of course is the is the Bupa 200E synthesizer itself. Uh, as you see it's got a pretty complex patch going on here and uh, that patch I've designed to try to be as as flexible as possible particularly in regards to this whole routing matrix thing up here which is how the Bupa has patch memory. It can remember all the uh, knob position and it can also remember routings in this matrix and so you can essentially have a virtual patch bay there that you, you know, route stuff around uh, instead of having to physically move the cords like you would uh, changing patches in, a, uh, in an original modular synthesizer. And so uh, what I've been working on since I got it is trying to get together a patch that is as flexible as possible that allows me to get uh, as much manual control through the continuum as possible and that I can switch easily between uh, presets. And uh, uh, the other video here, I'm going to uh, be playing a little improvisation that uses some of the sounds I've been working on so you kind of get an idea how that works. Uh, and controlling all that, uh, as I mentioned, is the Continuum, Hakan Audio Continuum Fingerboard, which is a multi-dimensional polyphonic controller keyboard. And what that means is that we have control in uh, multiple dimensions, uh, unlike a standard keyboard. You see it has kind of a piano layout on the surface, but that's all it is, there are no real keys. And what that means is that uh, horizontally you can slide from note to note. And not only that, but you can add vibrato to the note by wiggling your finger in a vibrato style um, and be very expressive. And it's also polyphonic. You can do that polyphonically as well, up to 16 notes. I have four, essentially, here. And all four notes can be individually changed. And uh, what you have then is kind of something that may seem like a, a polyphonic uh, on Martineau or uh, something like that. Uh, but it actually has a lot more control than that because it has control in three dimensions as well. So uh, we have pitch and we also have uh, X and Y, uh, rather Y and Z, which is uh, the vertical dimension and the depth or pressure dimension. And you can map that to anything that you want. Uh, so I have this in this particular patch mapped to both open a filter and change the symmetry of the waveform that's being generated by the oscillator. So it's a kind of a complex temporal change. And then finally I have the vertical dimension, or the, the depth dimension rather, that is I have mapped to amplitude. So I have direct control over the amplitude. I also have uh, trigger outputs, but I'm not actually using those. I'm just using amplitude directly to control uh, my own envelopes manually, essentially. I can play staccato uh, or legato. Oops. So uh, I have a lot of flexibility here uh, in terms of the dimensions of control. And all of that's being handled by the CVC, which is this device over here, uh, the Hopin Audio CVC or Continuum Voltage Converter. And that takes the output of the continuum through this MIDI cable, although it's not actually doing MIDI, it's just using the MIDI as, as, a, as a transmitter, um, and breaking it out into four sets of control voltages, the X, Y, and Z for four, uh, for four voices. And so I have those uh, each mapped to a different set of cables that I can, a different color-coded set of cables that I can trace around here and try to figure out what's going on. And I also have the cables on the synthesizer itself color-coded for different functions, like these are voices, these are returns from filters, these are audio outputs, and so forth. So there's a little bit of logic here, uh, as complex as it appears to be. So all of that is going into this four-channel mixer, a Mackie in kind of the secret four-channel mode, 
and uh, routing through a lexicon surround processor, a true surround reverb processor. And I have all the parameters of that mapped up to this fader box, this niche fader box, so that I can control things like the uh, mix of the, of the uh, reverb spaces. Uh, the size and so forth, uh, all those reverb dimensions. And it's a true reverb in surround, in quad sound, and I have a quadraphonic playback system to support that. As you see, I have a pair of speakers behind me as well as in front. And uh, that's kind of, uh, oh yeah, and finally the, uh, the MacBook up on top here, I use as a tuner. I've got a strobe tuner in there. I, have, I can tune the oscillators too, because they're analog oscillators. They need to be tuned even though we have digital control. Um, I have a multi-channel recorder, I have soft synths that I can play, and uh, plugins that I can process audio coming in, like from the synthesizer, all of which is, is under computer control here, and it all goes through a, a Motu FireWire interface down there in uh, four channels in and out. So I can play back the stuff I record through the mixer and so forth. Uh, so I've, I've tried to make it as flexible and compact as possible, and uh, that's about it, basically. Uh, I have the sound generator, the controller, the interface between them, audio processor, and recorder, all in a fairly complex package. And uh, what I've been working on is uh, this one particular piece, which is kind of an improvisation, a structured improvisation, using a lot of these different sounds that I've been working on in a lot of different setups. And I'd like to uh, play that for you next.